Yay guys, welcome back again. Uh, another ring pour placemat for you today. We're doing pinks this morning. So if you've been watching, uh, we did a red one, a purple one, a teal one, a blue one, and now we've got pink. My next one will be green. Uh, and then I want to do a brown one as well. How many is that? I'll have to add them up, see if we've got time to, to do another one. Okay, so pouring medium is three parts flow troll, two parts PVA craft glue, and one part pouring medium of your choice. This one's global. You can use any you like. Right, now my paints today are globals. And we've got this pale pink. Uh, I make that myself. It's just magenta and white. And then hibiscus, which is a bright pink. And then, of course, black and white. So each, if you've been watching, each of the ring paws has got black and white. And then two colours. And I am separating the two pinks with the white. Because I don't want the white next to the black because it goes a bit grey. And I'm doing two cups rather than have one big cup uh, because the bottom tends to get a little bit muddy so that's the reason now it's it's a quite a thick mix i've mixed this one part pouring medium to one part paint you can see how it's making a big mound on top so the thicker your mix is for the ring pour the more um, defined your rings will be if it's quite thin your rings will be quite quite loose and thin so a little bit of black in the bottom first not too much because whatever goes in first is going to come out last so I don't want too much of a black center but I do want a black center and then I want some pink I want them pale pink with next to my black so I'll put that in so I'm using half of the pink because I'm going to have two layers in each so and then half of the white now I haven't made as much white as I've made of the other colours. These have all got 50 grams of pouring medium and 50 grams of paint. The white I've gone 30 grams and 30 grams, just because I don't want the white to, to take over. I want it to be about the pink, more about the pink, and less about the white. White can really take over and dull your paints down a little bit. This is just a touch thick still. Some of the paints, as you may know, same brand, but some of them just can get a little bit thicker than others, can't they? This is one of those paints. Seems to be a little on the thick side. Okay, now back to the black. And I do want to keep a little bit of my black for my corners. So I'm going to pop that on there now, and then I'll remember that I need to save some of the black. Because it's it can be difficult getting to all your corners if you don't want to overstretch your work. So regardless of what technique you're doing, I would always advise to paint your corners first. It's a little safeguard. And if you end up going over them, it doesn't matter. Or you might want two black corners and two pink corners. So you can do that too. Alright, back to our pink. So finish it off. Now I'm not going for cells. I may get a few cells anyway because I've got Floetrol in the mix and also I've just mixed the paint so it, it might be a little bit airy. might have some air bubbles in it and they tend to show up as cells. So that's the pink gone. The pale pink. Wipe my hands. And now a little bit more white. So just separating the two pinks with the white. This helps that um, with the, the muddiness. I don't want my white next to the, the black. What I was thinking actually is maybe do another series, but just flow troll um, and not have white. So have black and then three pinks, black, three blues, black, three greens, like that because uh, the, the pink, as I said, it can take over. All right, finish that off. 
got a little bit left of this dark pink. It's almost a magenta. And got a little bit of black left because I didn't put that much black in the bottom to begin with because I didn't want that huge black center to come up. So I've got three rows of each, of three rows of the black and two of each of the other color. So if you're using your paper cups, uh, you can just pinch the cup to do your pull. And because I've layered on this side, I'm going to pinch there. And that's all, that's pretty much centre. So here we go. Now I like to do big folds rather than little tiny circles. And I get quite close to the, the card. It starts off a little bit wiggly and then the closer I get, the more control I get, I can do more of a, a circle. And I'm just going to spin around a little bit like that. And then come back around again, just to have some difference in, in the colour. And around again. Otherwise you tend to get big blocks with no colour in them, i found. Like a, a whole heap of pink or a whole heap of black. So I find if I just move my cup around, that eliminates that. Okay, so now, as you can see, the last little bit in the cup starts to go a little bit muddy. So that's why I choose to do two cups. So now I'm going to go again in the same spot there that I finished off. Pinch that in the centre there again. And off we go. And I don't want a big black section like that with nothing. So I will move my cup around. And try and get some colour through. But you see how that first little bit was a bit wobbly and not totally round, but then as I get a bit closer to the card, I can control it more and I can do more of a, a fold, really. Nice big circles on top of each other. They're about an inch wide, I guess, these circles. Two, three centimetres across. Back around. And then just slow down when you get to the last little bit in your cup and try and catch the drip so that you don't leave a tail. If you do leave a tail, you can just use a bamboo skewer and just um, sort of push that tail back into a circle and that should work fine. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is do one big circle with my paints. Actually, I need to torch first just to pop any bubbles. So torch first. Can you see all those little dots that have just popped up? That's where the bubbles were. Because my mix has got PVA in it, PVA glue, I need to pop those. You can see all those little dots that were popped and I'll do it again afterwards. So those little dots will turn into cells. So hanging onto your card. This is a 30 by 40 centimeter card as I always use. It's a thick card. Maybe you can get it from your office supply store. Um, I get them from eBay. You can get them from Amazon. They've got different names. Some people call them box board. A thick card. It's an A3 size which is 30 by 40 centimeters. Um, it's 12 by 16 inch. If you're a member of the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group, you can have a look. I've got quite a few links on my Facebook page of where to get these from eBay and I've also put in links from Amazon. So if I don't answer you, where do you get your card? What's it called? Please don't be offended. I get like a hundred questions a day on these cards and I just, every day, week after week, month after month, and I just can't answer them all again and again. But please jump on the Australian Acrylic Pouring website, uh, Facebook group, and the info's all there. Now off to that corner there and I'm going to stop just short of that black because I want to keep the, some of the black and take the weight of the paint back to the center again here and then I can go that way. You don't want to change straight there because you'll lose your circle so wait till it comes here 
and then go off to that corner like so these are pretty colors aren't they wish i had more of this dark pink in here i have to try not to lose it all try and keep some of that dark pink i think oh it rhymed pink i think i know silly it's early morning early on early on a sunday morning today I'm going to do a couple of pours for you and then I'm going to go to the shopping center with a friend. We're going to catch up, have a coffee and do some shopping. I need to buy a few clothes to take with on my cruise that I've been telling you about. It's always more fun to go shopping with a friend, isn't it? So back to the center and then I'll do this corner down here. So my rings are opening up beautifully. That's because I had the nice thick rings or ribbons as I like to call them when I'm pouring the cup onto the canvas. I get those nice big wide rings rather than the little thin narrow ones. Okay, I want to keep some of my dark red so I'm just going to go to there. Hoping to keep some of this up here but we'll see what happens this is just the first tilt you can always tilt again if you want to so back to the center again wait till it's here the center you can see where the paint is at the moment wait till it's there and then do the next corner it just means that you can keep your corners your corner shapes if you do that I'm liking this it's very dramatic isn't it with the pinks would have liked a more of the dark pink in the middle but it's it's on the side that's okay that's okay they're all different aren't they so once i've done my set of eight i will take them to office works my local office supply store and i'll ask them to put them through their plastic laminator so it'll have a plastic coat on the top and the bottom now that one i'm going to take off the corner a little bit bring it back to the middle I'll turn it around so that you can see I don't mind if this one hasn't got a black corner they don't all have to have a black corner a lot of paint on here it's really thick my one-to-one -one mix it is it is a thick mix now having a look at it seeing what I like seeing what I don't like I'm pretty happy with it. As I said, I don't want to lose this dark pink. Otherwise, it would just be too pale pink. So I need to keep I need to keep that outside. A lot of times I would just push some of that off, but I might actually push some of this off because see how it's getting a little bit wobbly here. If I can. You have to think about the consequences of moving all your paint down there again, whether it's worth it. But I'll see if I can just get some of that off because it's it's got a little bit wobbly there. Moving really slowly, paint's really thick. I'll just push some of that off. Lose that black corner and I've got something in there, I think. I need to get some tweezers in my studio to pick things out rather than a bamboo skewer because sometimes the bamboo skewer can't pick it up it just the little blob just kind of flops over okay paint off you go into the corner go 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 just cover that corner and then bring it back okay just add a little bit of interest. I don't want every corner to be identical. They don't have to be so matchy-matchy. I don't think anyway. So just bring this back a little bit now. And as I said before, you don't have to have this middle bit right in the center. I'm going to take it off center a little bit. 
So I've got a lot of black here. I'm going to just push it over that way just a little bit. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. So I've got a little bit of black on my corners up here. Let's run my finger through there to clean that off so you can see where the end is. See where the card ends. So I'll leave this on the um, cookie cooling rack for a couple of hours. Um, and then I'll take, take it off and put it onto a sheet of uh, greaseproof paper, non-stick baking paper, and just lay it flat and, until it dries. It'll take about five days. Let's touch up that corner there. And this corner. Scraping out my cup, I haven't got much paint left at all. So these pores take 400 grams of mixed paint. If you want ounces, divide that by 30. I can't use my calculator, my hands are too dirty, but that's what it is. Okay, so last little torch to pop some bubbles. And that is it. Pink one, done and dusted. I like that. It's very dramatic. And the white is still popping, it hasn't gone too muddy. Take this dirty glove off and zoom in a bit. If I can. Oh no, don't go dark. There we go. Pretty in pink, isn't it, as they say? It's really pretty, that one. Happy with it. All right, so the next one will be greens. And uh, I'll see you for that one. Bye for now.